And uh, that we all should be subject to one another, clothed with humility, because God resists the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. Now, I know that we don't have a lot of young, young people here. We have young, middle aged, and we have a variety of ages here this evening. And so God really uh, is, is, is addressing all of us. Let me just say, for all the young and younger people, God is not looking for your talent and your ability. God is looking for your humility. As crazy as that may seem, God is looking for your humility. Do you remember that God was bringing His people out of bondage? And uh, it was a process for the leader to get where he needed to be to bring them out. Maybe that's why they were there, but they a little bit longer. Maybe some of it was that God was working on the leader. Because he had a little bit of a problem because he was raised in Pharaoh's home. And uh, maybe there was a sense of entitlement in some ways, even though I believe that he was a God-fearing and god honor But he tried to do things his own way and take things into his own hands. We have to agree with that. And so he fled because Moses was concerned for his life. And there he is. He's taking care of his father-in-law's sheep. And, 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 and God speaks to him through the, the burning bush that is not being consumed. And so uh, I find something interesting about Justin about this man. Because when God begins to speak to him, he immediately takes a very humble position. He says, I can't because I stutter. Very humble. I can't do it. And uh, God just said to, to Moses, He said, I don't care about your inadequacies. I don't care about your flaws. I don't need your abilities and I don't need your talents. All I need for you is to humble yourself before me and to obey what I have to say and lead my people. Wow, what a life lesson for us. God doesn't need anything. He doesn't need our excuses or our inadequacies. We know them very well, don't we? And you may know that you're talented and gifted in areas, but God's not even looking for that. God simply wants you to humble yourself in His sight. That is why you're still here. God wants you in a humble position. Sometimes the living life realizes that I don't have all the talents and I don't have Nice and humble. Because God wants you to say something and do something because you're submissive to Him. You know, the world may want a Mariah Carey or Celine Dion to sing, but I believe in the ears of God that when a saint of God is humble before Him and they begin to sing the words of God, it has a sweeter, more worshipful sound than any other voice in all the world. It's often been said that God doesn't call the equipped, but He equips those that He calls. Peter said to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and that He would exalt you in due time. See, maybe while we're here is because God's time is He's going to do something in our life to resolve us in His time. It's very interesting to me, Sister Stacy. So the prophet comes, Samuel, and he's looking to anoint the king the king. And he goes through all the sons of Jesse. And, and no, what about that rare and hair boy out there taking care of the sheep? And this is the one, he anoints him the horn, the anointing oil, Brother Justin. But, did David go and sit down on the throne and wear a nice gold crown? No! He went back out to the field! You know why? Because there were some lessons God wanted him to learn. And, 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 and so, the important thing is for us to realize that God is going to do things in our life, but sometimes we just have to hold it on. We want bigger things, and we look at our life, and we project, we want our life to have purpose, we want our life to have meaning, and we want it to have value on several levels. Most of all, spiritually, should be but understanding that God has some lessons to teach us. 
and he'll exalt us in due time. You see, because Peter goes on down to say that we're to be sober and we're to be vigilant because we have an adversary that is the devil. And he's like a roaring lion roaming to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. And so you may say, why am I still here? You know, I've went through troubles and I've went through trials and I've went through temptations. You know, Peter was a very wise man because he said this. He said, I want you to know something. You wonder why you're still here, why you're going through troubles and trials and difficulties. You know why you're still here? Because you have an adversary against your soul, the devil. And you need to humble yourself before God and you need to be vigilant because he's out to kill you. Just ask Peter. Peter goes off about that. He knows about what it's like standing by fire one night and feeling all alone and frightened. Uh, he knows what it's like for the enemy to attack his soul. He knew all, but he was also, though he was loud and though he was opinionated and though he was rugged, but of Dennis, he's the man's man. Uh, but we find that he humbles himself, Brother Doug, before God. And God exalts him in due time. Listen, I don't believe that every problem we have comes from the devil. I believe God at times sends problems by to allow our faith to grow and to help us in our walk. But the enemy certainly is after us. What's it like when we have the best services in the world? I mean, you feel like you're floating on a cloud now when you're at the church. What's it like when the Holy Ghost is just, do you hardly get out of the parking lot? The devil is trying to cause chaos in your vehicle. He hates you to be victorious. He's working against you. The question you're asking is, why are you still here? Maybe you think, man, I should be dead. The devil should have already devoured me. But you know what? That's what the devil wants. But that's not what God wants. God has a purpose. And God has a plan. And God is up to something in our life. Know that because we are saved, Satan is never going to give up working hard on us. And when we get filled with the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking out of time, that makes the devil mad. He's going to fight even harder. I believe that one of the things he's done in our church, not our church alone, but the church in general, he's made us so complacent. The church world has become such a place that we say, come as you are. Yes, come as you are. But the church world has become a place where we say, worship as you are. And as you are. And feel good. And may it edify you. That's a lie for the devil. He's already devoured. He has them. The wages of sin is death. Now, unrighteousness will not inherit the kingdom of God. Bitter and sweet water can't flow from the same fountain. And so the enemy has already defiled, defiled a person. He's already made them lose their purpose. But God's divine purpose is to know that we have an identity. And our identity is found through the name of Jesus Christ. And through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And he's, a, he's going to work through us. Amen. To do great things as we humble ourselves before God. It's interesting. One person said knowledge without enthusiasm is, is boring. But enthusiasm without knowledge is chaos. God wants us in our life to gain a knowledge of Him and add enthusiasm to it so it touches the world and it gives us a real sense of purpose and we know why we're here. And then the Word of God says this, that the older are to serve the younger and the younger are to submit themselves to the older. How many people do you see that is going down in life? You know, in modern terminology, we call it mentors. God is looking for mentors to show the younger generation how to be identified Christ, how to be filled with the Holy Ghost, and how to live life with purpose. And know that I'm still here because God has me here. 
It's interesting because Joel said it. Let me just turn back there to Acts before I misquote it. In Acts chapter number 2, verse number 17, the Bible says, And it shall come to pass in the last days I will pour my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Do you know what? God wants the younger generation to have visions of what they can do for them. But God also wants an older generation while we are still here is that we can have a dream of mentoring and helping the younger generation see their vision fulfilled. Isn't it interesting when you look at the Word of God? In the New Testament, there are two ladies who are visited by an angel and they're told that they're going to have a baby. One of them is who? Elizabeth. She's the first one. Let's talk about her for a moment, Brother Eli. She's an older lady. She's not some young whippersnapper. She's an older lady. Her husband, Zacharias, uh, he is a man who she's seen great things done. She's seen miracles. She's not a foreigner to the temple and the things of God. She's uh, seen a prayer answered. And so God uses a miracle in this older lady's life that you're going to have a child. She never had a child before. Who's the other lady? Mary. How about her? She pretty old? No. Oh, she pretty wise and been around seen a lot? No. But likewise, both of those lives had purpose. Younger and older. And so what did Mary do as she's pregnant? She went off to visit Elizabeth. And I'm sure they had some good conversations together because Elizabeth had humbled herself under the hand of God. And then she begins to give her wisdom and her knowledge and what she knows about the things of God to this young Mary. And yes, Mary's excited and Mary's pondering all these things in her life heart. But she's still young. And she doesn't have the experience that Elizabeth has. But thank God. There was a woman in the list who had been identified and lived life with purpose, and God still had a plan for her. Listen, every one of us here, God has a plan for us, young and old alike. When Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane, he was looking for the youngest to the oldest disciple to join him in prayer. He was going to war in prayer. Some commentators have even said some of the terminology that, that is used as, as Jesus goes to the Garden of Gethsemane was like him taking a sword that was unsheathed because he was looking to fight. And Sister Stacy, he was fighting alone because young and old alike among the disciples did not find their identifier and did not find their purpose in prayer. What would the story have been like? I'm only with you a little while, and then God is going to pray. Peter, it's needful that you, you need to pray. Temptation is coming your way. Do you know what you're going to go through in the next year? You need to pray. Our last purpose should be found in going to war on our knees. We look at David's mighty men of valor. And you look at Eleazar, and he is a man who fought in battle until his hand played to the sword. He was identified as an Israelite. He was identified as one of God's chosen. And his purpose was, I'm not going to take care of just in the money anymore. It's a small garden, but my purpose will be to defend it. Tonight, I hope I've brought to light some answers to questions for you that I think are pretty common to us to look at. Who am I? I am not What is my purpose? Why am I still here? Because God wants to use you. No man is a power, no man is to himself. I want us to do something tonight. 
I wonder this evening if you could just bow your head. And maybe you think sometimes about your past. Realize that God has changed your name. If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost tonight, I want you to make a commitment to God that you're going to pray and seek His face to be filled with the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in other tongues. If you've not spoken in tongues in a while, make a commitment to God. God, I'm going to practice life in the Spirit. And the third thing is this. Commit to humbling yourself and letting your life be used to mentor someone younger than you. Maybe they're not younger physically, but maybe they're just younger spiritually in faith. God, my life's purpose will be identified in mentoring others. Take a few moments right where you are just to bow your head and to commit to God.